from Death Valley, standing 6'10", weighing 330 pounds, The Undertaker! That's not bad. It's okay. I'm with a man that needs no introduction, one of the most popular wrestlers of all time, top two or three. I'm talking about the one and only Mark Calloway, known as The, the Undertaker. Undertaker. Mark, great How to have you? you here, man. Thank you. Thank yes. you. My pleasure. I love the, uh, you know, the, 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 the Undertaker song. <laughs> that, that makes me just like, oh, get chilled. And, yeah, it's, uh, it has been, I, I don't know that, uh, I can't say that I was smart enough to have the presence of mind to do it. I got the call from Vince. I'm Vince McMahon, and you will treat me with respect. The call was something like this. Uh, the phone rings, I pick yeah. it up. Uh, Hello? Is this The Undertaker? <laughs> Undertaker. Yeah. yeah, this is The Undertaker. Oh, all right then. Hey, can you be up here tomorrow? You know. And next day I was on. And that the plane. was Vince. That was Vince. Called me. He's he he had had this character, which the Gosh. original character was was based on an old western, uh, uh-huh. an old western Undertaker. Wow. At the time, people were so just enthralled with it because mm-hmm. it was so different. Like. Yes. You know, most interview segments or the way that most wrestlers were talking, yep. you know, was, you know, well, let me tell you something. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You made a lot of promises to the macho man, didn't you? Who are you? Never tell me how to wrestle. What I said, I talked very low. You will rest in peace. Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously, you know, there were, it was very menacing words, but you know, when, when someone, if you're in a room or something, and someone starts to talk low, well, yeah. what do you do? You kind of lean forward. That's right. To put, you know, mm-hmm. so I had their, their attention and they're trying to keep the character uh, relevant for this long, um, you know, you, you really have to keep your finger on the pulse of things because if you don't, you know, what usually happens is before you realize that you're stale, your audience wow, is already. That is good. You know, your audience has already moved on. How, how, I mean, how do you do that? Just because uh, I know we'll have so many people watching they're in business or they're in whatever. I mean, how do you, I mean, what would you say about keeping your finger on the pulse of, of, of things like that? Well, you just can't. I, I never, like, I, once I got to the WWE mm-hmm. and then, you know, I, I kind of started to realize that we had something special yes. with that character. Um, I was never satisfied. Like, I, I like it. You know, I was like, okay, we're here. Okay. And we're getting a great reaction. But wh- what's next? What, wh- you know, I'm, I'm always looking down the road like, okay, um, I, I need something. I need, so- I need to bring something new to the table, yes. but I got to be true mm-hmm. to, you know, what my fan base and what my audience, mm-hmm. you know, they've accepted and this is what they want but you also have to keep it, you know, you have to figure out ways to keep it fresh, yes. you know? So you're watching what everybody else is doing and you're trying not to fall in because that happens so often in our business. Somebody, um, you know, somebody will hit, you know, okay. hit something and then like everybody's trying to do the same That's thing. That's a great word, it, yes. You know, and so, it, I, you know, I was fortunate in the sense that my character, you know, it wasn't that over the top, you know, mm-hmm. high energy. My energy was it was high, it was high energy, but it was at a whole different. Yes, it was. You know, it is. And and it, and that's what separated me. You know, so I always had to keep you know keep an eye on okay what, okay what's this guy done? like you know take you know Rock and and Cena and mm-hmm. Austin and um, you know Triple H, Shawn Michaels. You know, those are your, you know those are the guys that are Ric Flair. You know, you're yes. watching all these guys and seeing what uh-huh. they're doing, and you're seeing what they're doing that works. And then you figure out, okay, all right, that's what they're doing. So what is the, you know, what is the antagonist, antagonist you know, to yeah. what they're doing yes. that works for me and is true to the character and what the fans, you know. It, that's I, so smart. 
Well, <laughs> that is smart. To, yeah. It, it's just, I mean, b the business, and and it is a, it is a business. I mean, you. And there's so many guys that are there and are hungry and are trying to climb up that ladder, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so, you know, if you kind of sit back and like, yeah, check this out, you know, yeah, I, you right. know, hey, I just sold out Madison Square Garden, yeah, you know. And you sit on that for a little bit, you know. There's somebody else that's climbing, like, okay, well, I'm gonna settle it out. Yeah. I'm gonna settle it out five times in a row. You know what I mean? Yep. And that was that was great. That era, you know. I mean, everybody was clawing. Everybody mm -hmm. was fighting for the brass ring, you know. And um, you know that that the 2000s my goodness that the attitude era was it was it was insane i like to um the character undertaker because it's it's all that energy and strength that that's kind of contained but you let it out it's at first. the right time it's first yep i i am a firm believer in less is more as far especially with with, with my character and, and and when i when i talk to young guys i love that yeah, I, they, they, they think, you know, so they think, okay, well, I can do, and the athletes today are, they're off the chart. Yeah, they I mean, are. They're just ridiculous how athletically talented, uh, you know, the, the men and women are, mm -hmm. to, for that matter. But they rely, see, so wrestling and sports entertainment, they, they, it's not about, it's not about the moves. It really isn't. Okay. It, it, it's... It's being able to, to evoke emotion in one facet or another. I, you have to either make people love you or you have to make them hate you. Well, either way, and it doesn't matter really which one. It, yes. You know, I mean, certain people like to be hated and other people like to be loved. It, but if you, can't, you know, if you can't bring that emotion out of your audience, you're not gonna have them for long. And a lot of times what happens with these huh. young guys is, they're so athletic, they're so gifted, like, well, you know, they'll do some kind of double crazy backflip off the top rope, land on somebody on the floor. And then that's what the audience, that's what the audience takes away from it. This guy does crazy stuff. Well, you can only see that so many times before you're like, mm -hmm. I've seen that, Right. I need something new. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a double backflip, you know, full yeah. gainer onto somebody. Yeah. Now, how do I up that? Mm -hmm. And that's the position they sometimes back themselves into. Like, they have to keep up in the ante, and when you up the ante like that, then you increase your, your potential for, for, you know, injuries and, and you know, yeah. catastrophic injuries yes. at, at that. So characters, like, you know, I'm, I'm just I keep looking back, but, yeah. like, you know, guys like The Rock and Cena and Flair, yeah. you know, all those guys like that, you know, they had the ability to either make you love them or that make you hate them. And Cena is such an anomaly because you don't know one night to the next whether uh -huh. they're going to go ballistically crazy for him or yeah. they're going to boo him out of the building. It is, it, it is, he is probably the most polarizing yeah. uh, guy that's come along in a long time because uh -huh. he just, you know, his fan base is, it's crazy. But what happens is he sells tickets. Yep. He's, he works in front of full arenas. Same thing when Rock was there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but but that's, the, that's the key. We, we tell stories. We use moves, the wrestling moves, to help tell the story. Yeah. But it, it, it boils down to the character and in, in, in the, in the, you know, being able to, to bring that emotion out of your crowd, out of, out of your yeah. audience, you know. And it's all about love or hate, you know. And, it's, you, and you know, there's a lot of guys that... Yeah. They, it takes a while to figure that part out. Oh, know? yes. And then by the time they do, they're so beat up and injured and hurt. Like, you know, it's like. I mean, that, that, it's just, it's complex. I mean, you got to really. Yeah. I mean, I you mean, just, you can't, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of, you know, we get a lot of people from different sports, you know, yeah. that maybe were football players or, or, or amateur wrestlers or, you know, and I think, oh, it's wrestling. I can do that. Yeah. You know, and what you end up finding out is like, these guys come out, mm -hmm. and they 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 don't they're not they don't look genuine, you know. They it's like they, they look out of place because what they're doing they're trying to emulate or be like a wrestler they've watched on TV yeah. instead of being the wrestler that's on TV, and that's that's probably one. Say of that the again. That's a great. But they're they're trying to. Eat. Yeah. So like if if. Somebody was, uh, and I'll use, I'll, I'll use The Rock, for okay. example. 
I mean, because he was really, you know, a charismatic uh, guy. Yeah. So um, you get somebody out there and like, oh, well, I mean, I'm, I've watched The Rock. Yeah. The Rock, I'm going to do that. So, you know, he comes. If you try to be something else, then, I mean, you have to make it yours. you got to own it, you know. If I'm trying to, you know, if I'm trying to be The Rock, people are going to see right through that. That's right. You know, and it's like, oh, it's so, uh, yeah. you know. But if you if you can if you can be the original individual, you know, that's that's the key to making people you know believe in you, and that's what that's what you have to do. I mean, if you're if you're a good guy, like we'll we'll take Stone Cold for instance. Yes, he was anti-establishment. Yeah, everybody knew it, mm -hmm. and man, he was the you know he was he was the guy. That's right. You know. He was going to, you know, tell the boss what he could do with it. Yeah. You know, and you believed it. Yes. You, it's, you, I mean, you like, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. you know, and and it wasn't too far a stretch from, you know, who Steve really was. <laughs> it was a, no, I yeah. mean, it was pumped up a little I, bit. I understand that. Yeah. It's Be pumped up a little bit, but, you know, you, you, you're not too far from, you know, from yeah. ones that are really successful. You're not mm -hmm. too far off from the character. Like, I work with a lot of the young talent yes. now. And so, and, and another guy, Shawn Michaels, mm -hmm. he, he, does, he works with a lot of young yeah. talent. And it's funny, we can tell, we can tell these guys, okay, well, you know, you try this, do this, do this, and yeah. do this. And then I can come back and say, that, well, you know, do this, do this, and do this. Mm -hmm. And now they're like, mm -hmm. okay, wait a minute. I got one guy here that's done all this, and he's telling me one thing, and we got, a, yeah. I got another guy saying this, you know, that's the hard part is putting it together, taking those pieces yes. and figure out, OK, that, what, yes. OK, I see what Mac's doing. there. I like that. That will work. Mm. But you can't, you know, you, yep. you can't just take, OK, that worked for him. It's going to work for me. It that's right. That way you've got to figure out how to take all this information, mm -hmm. all these pers different personalities yes. and formulate your own. And that's, um, you know, like I said, that's, that's, that's the, one of the trickier aspects of whether you're a success or, you know. You know, one time, uh, Mark, I was over in Australia at a leadership conference, and they were talking about how, how people that sometimes try to be someone they're not, they call them tryhards. I know you've probably heard mm -hmm. that before. He's a tryhard. So that's kind of what you're saying. In other words, y y you learn from everybody, but take that. And you have to somehow, and that's the complexity of it, I guess, make it your own. Make it your own. That, that's the key. You have to be able to, mm -hmm. to take all this information in and figure out how this information works, how, how it works for me, mm -hmm. you know. And okay, how, and Mark, here's how I fell into wrestling, basically loving wrestling. I grew up in the Carolinas, mm -hmm. North and South Carolina, before I moved to Texas. And uh, we had Mid-Atlantic Championship, yeah. there you go, wrestling. Mm -hmm. I remember Flair when he first came on the scene. And, and, and I mean, back in the day, three channels on your right. television. Cable was, you know, yeah, it was. you never even thought about cable. I'm not sure he was even invented at that point. Maybe it was, whatever. But three channels, no social media, obviously. My brother and I, man, I'm every Saturday. I mean, we're glued. glued. And there was, there was a little arena called Township Auditorium in Columbia, South Carolina, I'm telling you, Mark, packed out. But taking what you said earlier, Flair was so believable. He like owned, and I don't know Ric Flair, but he owned the character so much. It was just, I mean, I remember locking in, you know, that <laughs> jet fly, you know, whatever. Yeah. House, yeah. Uh, yeah. Slick Rick, whatever, all that. I was just, was like, whoo, I mean. He's another one that lived. I mean, he, he, yeah. he lived the character. <laughs> yes. Right? yes. Ric Flair was Ric yep. Flair yep. all the time. Yep. Always, you know, yeah. always dressed to the tins right. and, you know, custom, custom made tins, from head to toe. Alligator, you yes. know, alligator <laughs> exactly. shoes. And, uh -huh. and, and everywhere you went, you saw what you saw on TV. Yes. So, you, you know, that was, that's just investing in your brand and investing in, in your character. And, uh -huh. you know, um, and, and, then, and that's what, you know, to this day. <laughs> Mark, before you became the icon that, that you are, okay, um, okay, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, 
Then I went to school, as, as we said earlier, played basketball at Florida State. Well, then that's when I got into to, uh, watching um, uh, TBS, Gordon Soley. Great, great voice. Oh, yeah. see, unbelievable. Look at Flair. Great trapezius development. Oh, he's got him in the figure four leg dive. I mean, I love, and, and I loved watching some of the interviews. Gordon Soley, when he would talk to someone he didn't agree with, you could see it all over his face. He didn't, he even yep. played such, he, was he, awesome. he understood it. Yep. I love Gordon Soley. He understood his, his role in the whole thing. Yes. Uh, Jim Ross is another one yep, yep. that's like that. That's right. Michael Cole now, yep. um, you know, but Gordon Soley, I mean. His, I loved his voice. His voice was awesome. His face is a crimson mask. Yes, I mean, his face is a crimson mask. Look at The Undertaker. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this yeah. man, six ten. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was awesome. And I mean, and that's such a vital part because, you know, you, you, you have to have that voice to, to put it all together because yes. when you're in the ring, I mean, you, you're not, you don't have the ability to, you know, so you need that, that seasoned voice and that one that has yes. the insight to, yep. you know, to tie all the loose ends mm -hmm. together. And it, it's, and who's it was a, awesome. Mark, who's the strongest guy you've ever wrestled? You go like, Ed, this guy's strength is like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be someone we've never heard of or. Oh, man, there's, there's been a, there's been a or lot. Or several of them that are just uh, like, this guy's a freak, man. Uh, Lesnar. Um, really? Lesnar was, especially his first time in when he was still in his 20s, he was just a freakish athlete. Uh, he still is. Yes. But, but when he was I mean, in his 20s. When he was, he was in his 20s and he, and he first came up, I mean, you know, he was a uh, NCA national, he was a heavyweight champion, national oh. champion. And, you know, you, you, he defied what your mind would tell you because you would see him, yeah. you know, he's like 6'4, yeah. 285, 290. Okay. Yeah. And you think there's no way that a human being that size can move as fast, you know. Really? I mean, you know, his, his, like, you know, his single leg or double leg shot would be the same as somebody that was 180 pounds. I mean, he's just really, wow. really, really freakish. Um, he was one, um, um, you know, there, there's a guy out, Kane, my gosh, Kane, Kane is just incredibly strong. Um, man, there's, 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 there's been some cat, Mark Henry, oh my gosh, yeah. Mark Henry is, he, he, he's just, Mark Henry is at a, at a if I can. Hold another level. Hold another level. I've seen him, uh -huh. now this, this is a great story. Yeah. Um, so w when we, we travel overseas, yes. um, you know, w once we get to wherever we're going, we travel on bus, you know, by buses, you know, so you get good guys on one bus and the bad guys on the other. Um, anyway, we were checking out of a hotel one morning. We had like a four hour drive to the next city, wherever we were going. And um, there was in front of the first bus was a car and we couldn't, the, the driver didn't have enough room to, to pull out. And, uh, you know, we're sitting there and like, no one can find who owns this car yeah. and everything, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's looking at their watch like, oh my gosh, you yeah. know, everybody's worried about, oh, I gotta go to the gym and I gotta eat and all this other. Mark, they, you know, Mark gets wind of it. He goes, I'll handle it. Mark gets up, goes off the bus, grabs a towel, goes to the back end of this car, puts the towel underneath the fender well, he reaches under it, and he picks it up and he takes a couple steps and puts it down. My, oh. <laughs> he looks at his hands, Gosh. re fixes the towel, hooks it under there again. He picks it up, walked it a couple Unreal. more steps until we had enough angle to, that the bus could pull out. I, 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 I would, you know, I was like, what do you do with that? Yeah. yeah and you know, yeah. I, I've seen him take, <sighs> We were in Japan once, and I seen him take a nice piece of silver. It was like a um, a spoon you'd stir yeah. your coffee with. Uh -huh. So it's a spoon about like that, nice, yeah. thick silver. And he twisted it like a like a pretzel. That's I, I, I've seen him take I've seen, seen him take frying pans and bend them in half. It, it, it's just I. That was just a gift that he was given that not many people have. No. Yeah. I mean, he, and just the nicest guy in the world, but, you know. Have you ever wrestled Andre? 
I never got the chance to, to wrestle Andre. By the time that I got to uh, what, what was WWF, then, yes. WWE now, uh, by the time that I got there, his health was really yeah. uh, in decline. Um, he wrestled a few times, um, and it was funny mm -hmm. because you know, Andre really was old school, and Andre didn't like big guys either. Really? No, he did not like big. He loved me, but yeah. thank goodness. <laughs> uh, but for most big guys, you know, I don't know. He like thought they were arrogant or bullies yes. or whatnot. But he, he he had his way with a lot of guys that you would just like go, ooh, that was a pretty tough guy. Andre would set Take him straight. Him anyway, he he liked me, and you know, he was like even you know, and I, I guess we always think we got one left in us, you yeah. know. Um, but Andre, he had always, you know, I would come in, he was always, you know, now he's Andre the Giant at the time, biggest star yes. that's ever, you know, at that time, you know, really been in yeah. wrestling, worldwide phenomenon. He was always the first guy in the locker room. Huh. You know, I mean, he was always there. He loved to sit there and play cribbage yeah. before he'd go. And I'd come in and, you know, I'd say, hey boss, how you doing today? You know, oh good. One day, kid, me and you, I have this, I have an idea. I was like, oh, really, Bob? Tell me about it. Oh, and he'd never tell me. Never tell me. And I would, I'd, you know, he, uh -huh. a good friend of mine to this day, is, his name's Tim White, and he drove Andre around. He was one of really? our referees. Yeah. And I, I asked, I'd ask Tim all the time, I said, did he ever tell you? He would, I asked, he would never tell me. I mean, he was an old school Andre. So he, he didn't want anybody else to do it because... Uh -huh. He thought he was going to get to a point where sure. where he could get back in the ring and we could do oh, this and man. you know have a really big deal. So no one knows what it was. Uh -huh. but, you know he he you know he ended up passing away and he never let me know. God. And I, I wonder to this day because uh -huh. you know I was like man I bet it was good. So, I bet it, <laughs> Mark, what do you like to do other than I know you're you're so busy traveling around the world, appearances, you know your your, your business. What do you enjoy like? recreationally just you know hanging out what I mean, what what do you like to do it, well it's it's kind of funny because I, I i was on the road for so long you know like I, I, it's all i did you know when i was home i rested so you know now that i have a little more time i, I like to hunt i like to fish um where do you and, like to fish uh it, it doesn't matter wherever they're biting i mean we got a we got a a pond in the neighborhood that's stock full of, I, don't, I don't mind just going out there and mm -hmm. throwing a line and um I love fishing. It's my yeah, favorite. I, love, I yeah. love to fish. That's why I ask. That. It's one of my fondest memories as a kid. My my dad, um, you know, he'd take us down to um, uh, Matagorda Bay. Oh yeah, or, or uh, a couple places and oh. go wade fishing back in the day. And uh, isn't that fun? It was so much fun. And those are some of my fondest memories uh -huh. with, with my dad because he he was one that really didn't take a lot of vacations. And yeah, but man, when we went fishing, it was that was you know. I mean that was you know that was funny because that was like pre Jaws and yeah you know you'd have a you'd have a stringer full of redfish behind you and you know things bumping into you and you never even really thought about it being mm -hmm. a shark. But. Mark, okay, talk to me about the travel though because I know people watching this uh, a few, but most people have no idea how much you travel. For example, just kind of give me um, I don't want to say this, but kind of an average time where okay you're wrestling around. Uh, okay, North America, and, and then let's say you go to Japan to just kind of just generally. So when I was going full time, I, I, there was, I know I had a stretch, I'm going to say probably eight years where I averaged over 270 dates a year gone on the road. I'd be out sometimes 30, 40 days, and that's working every Good day. Night. So you're telling you wrestled 270 times? Well, more than that, because... And part of the year, back in the, in the early 90s, there's part of the year, like when the, when oh the winter and the kids go back gosh. to school, that we would work twice on Saturday and twice on Sunday. So we would say, I'd be in Rochester, New York okay. at, at noon or one, you'd wrestle, change your clothes, get in your rental car, and then drive to uh, Rochester and Syracuse, you know I mean? And then fortunately I got to a point where I could say, look, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I took a page out of Andre's book. And I said, "Look, I can't do I can't do these double shots like that." Uh -huh. I mean, it was just I mean, you're taking off, you're you know, you're you're sore, you're you know, cold and you're wet, and but that was that was just the norm for a long time. That's just how it was done, and and uh, 
you know, sometimes in the middle of a, of a tour here in North America. So, so in North America, when we, when we tour, you you know, the company flies you to, you know, so I, I, I live here in Austin. So they would fly me, say, to Chicago. Okay. All right. And then you go to rent a car or however you, it's, you're, it's basically your travel is up to you from the time that you land. Mm-hmm. So whether you want, you know, car service and, or rent a car, I learned really late. I started leasing a bus, which I wish I had done a lot sooner. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, it's a big expense, mm-hmm. but it would have, I think it would have prolonged my ability to work a, a fuller schedule. Right. Um, just because, you know, the, uh, uh, most people don't realize, you know, the, you day after day after day. So, you know, you get out of an arena at 12, you know, 1230 at night sometimes, and you've got to put in two, three hundred miles to go to the next town, you know. So by the time you get so at three o'clock in the morning or four mm-hmm. in the morning, you're mm-hmm. pulling up to a hotel. And there were several occasions, you know, especially there at the end when I was working all the time, you know, and you'd sit there, you'd open the door, you know, and you'd have to start thinking like, okay, all right, let me get this leg out first, you know, because your body just kind of just, you know, there's yeah. nowhere to stop because everything's closed, right? you know, so you, you get like a, con- a convenience store meal, however, you know, whatever that yeah. means. And then, you know, and then you've, you've pretty much set in this position, you know, for mm-hmm. four hours and then you have to get up and you go check in your hotel, go to sleep. Now, if you want to get up in the morning and work out or do whatever you have to do, you, you got to make time for that and you got to make time to eat and you got to get to the arena at a certain time. God, that's brutal. It is, it's a, I think it's a lot more than what most people really think. I mean, for, I know for a long period of time, people just thought, well, you just do your TV shows and you know, that's yeah. it. They had no earthly clue about all the, the live non-televised events that, that they do. But, but, but when you reach your status, you want to, you know, the best of all time and all that, the latter years, would, would the company fly you privately places a lot or, or would you still have to do? Um, there, there are a few occasions. It just depends on um, just you know, the, where, yeah, the, whatever, just the yeah. logistics okay. of it. But normally, I mean, yeah, no, normally fly I me mean, commercial and, uh, uh, you know, I, and then, you know, usually they'll do a car service or something mm-hmm. for me okay. at this point. So. Okay, let's say we take, take, take a trip commercially, you, you, you and me. Um, I bet it's uncanny how many people recognize you, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's kind of hard to hide. <laughs> I was uh, going to say, man. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. And, and a lot how do you, of times, and I was going to, yeah, but I wanted, one of my next questions was, you know, how do you handle that? But let me, yeah, just tell, I, I bet you have some great stories about that. It's hard to hide. Yeah, it, it really is. It's Six, tough. Nine, to, yeah, you know, and then whatever, you know, sleeves. 90. Even if people, like, even if they're yes. not wrestling fans, uh-huh. it doesn't take, it doesn't take too, you know, it doesn't take too many removals to find somebody who that person oh. knows. Oh, yes. So, so normally, oh. you know, your size, you're like, wow, that's a big dude. I want yeah. to play football or what, yeah. you know, and then, and then all of a oh, sudden, oh, wait a minute. No, that's that, that, that's the that, undertaker. That's the yeah. grave digger. Yeah. You know, whatever, like, yeah. yeah, all these different, yeah. you know, and, and then, then it's just like, so for years there. So like I, like I said, I kind of lived the character. So, I, yeah. you know, it, just, was, it was this guy everywhere. Right. And I so mean, people, I bet. Well, I, and yeah, and, you know, it was like, if they came up to me, yeah. then it would be different. But I mean, I kind of tried to give them that, that aura, like, uh-huh. don't mess with him because he may, you know, yes. he may dro- you know, drop you where you stand, right? And, and uh, uh-huh. uh, you know, because people, some, you know, they don't, you know, they don't really I would understand. be scared to come up to him. If I saw if this dude, and, and I'm, I'm thinking like, wow, there's the Undertaker. It, it, it's <laughs> funny because there, there's a lot of people think that, and then they, yeah. they'll either send... Like they send, they're sending wives. They'll send somebody that maybe has no clue, so right? Hilarious. And then if I don't snap at them, then yeah. they come over. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, really? Lord, you send yeah. you, you send your wife over here? You, <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. I won't take a picture with her, but yeah, I'm not that's taking funny. a picture with you because you know that's you need to man up a little uh-huh. bit. I, I try to be as accommodating as I can. Yes. Um, unless my kids are with me, yeah. I, I don't. I, I'm, I, I understand that. I, I, I'm a little, not, I, don't, I, I try to be as polite as I can. Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want my kids' pictures taken. Yes. Uh, I don't want them on social media. Right. Um, really protective of that. And um, so, you know, I, I normally say, look, my family's with me. Uh, you know, normally I would, but I don't take pictures mm. because it just causes something, you know. 
And most people, most people understand that and respect it. Uh, so, Mark, every day of your life, I, I mean, how many, wherever you go, someone is going to come up to you. Pretty okay. much. I mean, like, you know, I don't really, you know, when I'm home now. That's, that's crazy. It, it, and I mean, and that's just mm-hmm. me. I mean, you, 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 then you, you know, if you think about like pop stars or movie stars, yes. I mean, it's, 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 it's really ridiculous. Um, and, you know, and people, you know, you, obviously you want to treat your fan base right. But I yes. mean, people really, really assume and, and take a lot for granted. Like, yes. you know. They like, do, don't they? they? They're like, well, I'm, I'm your fan. I, you need to be, you know, like, yes. I, I, I get that. And, and that's why I show up to the towns that I'm booked and I work my tail yeah, off for you. Right. You know, that's, that's my obligation. Yes. That's, you know, I give it everything I have. Right. Whether, you know, at this point, however much I got left, I give it to you. Yeah. You know, this is a bonus. You know what? You were happy. You were lucky enough to to come across me, and and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'll sign it, yes. if you know, just just give me a little bit of of respect. I, I don't, I hate, and I hate using that word. Hate, no. I hate. That's twice. That's okay. But you know, people that'll do the old, take the camera out and try to do the old, the old oh, sneak peek, right? Yeah. Like the guys, they're they're afraid to come up to yeah, you, yeah, so they they'll are. try to they'll Scared. try to yeah. video you, oh. and, and then and then somebody else that has you know like will come up to me and say, hey, can I have one? Like, well, absolutely. What you you know? Yeah. And then the person that was trying to be sneaky, like, oh, he's okay. Oh, I'm gonna go up to him. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. What about the, what about the ten pictures mm-hmm. you just took a minute ago? Oh, what? Well, yeah. I'm like, mm, yeah. Have you ever had anybody uh, try to like say, let's? Uh, not, uh, fight or not, or not fight or, re- or or some. Surely people aren't that crazy. Well, not, they are. They are. I want no, I have yeah. people ask me all the time. Hey, will you choke slam me? <laughs> like, I'm saying, you really don't. Want no, me to no, do that. no. I don't know. I said it's don't. a nice no. flight, but the landings are rough. I'm just saying. Oh. You know, it, it is. <laughs> but I like it. A nice flight, bad landing. Whoa. Yeah, it, it, it's just. But wow. really, I, I've been I've been very fortunate. And you're jujitsu too. You know, I mean, this this yeah. guy. Here's what people don't know about these guys like this. This guy, obviously, one of the top two or three of all time. But I mean, my brother does a lot of um, uh, the MMA stuff. Mm-hmm. He told me he goes, a professional wrestler. I don't care who you are, how big you are, how bad you are, how tough you think they are. Five seconds done. And a guy like him, I would, I would never do it. You put your hand on him, game over. Yeah. I, no, no, it is. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm just going to tell that for you because I know you got the body, the, the way you know how to move your body, the strength, done. Yeah, it's, it's. You know, you know. He's yeah, like, oh. <laughs> he's I'm, like going. He's like, yeah, that's true. Don't. So. No, yeah, please don't test yeah. that. Tell me about, um, tell me about your, your um, life of faith. How did you become like a Christ follower? Tell me, just tell me a little bit about that. I always believed in God. I just didn't really understand yeah. what it was having a relationship yes. with God. Yes. And I have to give a lot of credit to my wife. Um, That's great. Uh, great story. Yeah. She, she, I mean, she See, this Florida really, State girls. There well, you go. That, that, see? Well, that, that I married one, one too. That, I married that, one well, too. Her whole family huh. is Florida State. I mean, yes. her mom, her dad, it just, it could, yeah. but uh, um, very, very strong in her faith. Yeah. And, it's a Christian uh, school. And um, <laughs> anyway, she would like, you just, just come with me. Yeah. And I'm like, babe, I'm telling you, I mean, I walk through those doors, you know, the, the yeah. roof's going to start shaking and, re- you know, and I was like, I, I, I look, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm good with yeah. God. I believe in, you know, yeah. she, no, it's Mark. There's so much more to it than that. So I said, okay. I said, I'm, I'm going to go, but if lightning bolts start flying, you know, <laughs> uh-huh. don't, don't blame me, yeah. you know. And, um, and, and, and that, that, that's how it started. She, that was very important to her, um, that that's I great, have a relationship, yes. you know, with, with, with Christ. And, yes. and to really understand what that means. Yes. So once again, God working in his, in, in, you know, in, in, in the yeah. ways that he does, Put us here at Lake Hills Church. That's great. It was, you know. Mark, that's a great story, man. It it, it really was. I, I I sat down and it was like it was like we were having a conversation. Yes. With, you know, three thousand people. Three thousand people. Were, it, it felt like an intimate conversation. It was the it was 
the perfect place at the perfect time yes. for me. God definitely used so many great things to bring you guys together. That's yeah. awesome. No, it really is. Mark, how, how many, tell me some quick injuries you've had over the years. Okay, let's see. Both eye sockets have been crushed. Um, Your eye sockets? Yeah. Both. Uh, at called, one time? No, they were separate. They were years apart. <laughs> I've had probably, I'm, I'm guessing we're closing in on 20 different orthopedic type surgeries from just wrestling related injuries. Both hips have been, uh, had, a, had a form of hip replacements. Torn biceps, torn pecs, torn triceps, bone spurs, training. You know you're match. on a level that very few people have ever thought about being on. I just think I'm, a, I'm probably a little tougher than I am smart. <laughs> yes. He takes it in I've seen you a lot of times. You, yeah, so that's a choke slam. So how do you... You really want to know how I get people up? How, yeah, no, you don't have to do I'm it. Not, no, 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 okay, because yeah, it, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 because yeah, yeah, sometimes, because, I mean... Grab them. Yeah, absolutely. I grab a handful, and <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't go up, if you don't jump, you're going to get, yeah, you know, you're going to get a little wedge in there. Oh, <laughs> the oldest trick in the book. Who's the biggest guy you've ever, I mean, when you're at your, when this was fixed and everything, how, how, how like, how, how big are we talking about? How much um, guys weigh? Uh, you see, you three, go two, two. four, I got a four, it wasn't real high, but I did a 400, 400 pounder. <laughs> It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like. It wasn't high, though. It wasn't high, I mean, but it, it, I don't it care. Look, I care. I love, like, you get somebody like, you know, you get somebody like a Ray Mysterio, some of yeah. the little guys, man, those you are just, awesome. Then you could just walk around, <laughs> you know. The Undertaker. Oh! Mark, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for giving us the time. The Undertaker, Mark Calloway. This guy's the real deal. Great guy. Loves the Lord, I mean, just down to earth, but we're talking The Undertaker.